Hi, my name is Kai Won. Today we're going to share with you guys everything I saw that are still prototype or like it's not even shipped out yet, that kind of product at a Navy 2023. So let's get started. At JVC booth, they are showing us the 3D real-time scanning camera. Hi, uh, this is uh, our prototype as uh, 3D modeling camera. Capturing uh, RGB data and uh, depths. Because usually if you are going to scan a 3D object, you will need a scanner and just like uh, walk around your object and then it will come out with a 3D model in the software. But like this one, it's scanning in real time and it's showing the 3D object in real time. Maybe it's not perfect right now because it's still prototype. I mean like the edge is a little bit mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. of like <laughs> glitchy, that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I think so. At OZ booth, they are making a new monitor called Lil Men 5. It's a 5.5 inch full HD 1000 nit touchscreen display. So everything you need, but there is no any physical button. Because sometimes if your hands is a little bit sweaty or like the touchscreen is not functioning correctly, there is no way to control this monitor without the touchscreen. So, and but I really love the software part. The interface is pretty smooth and you can really customize every single part, the bottom line, every page, what kind of uh, functions, scopes you want. PD Movie, they're making a brand new focusing motor called Motor Smart. What's smart about it? Because it has a sensor that can scan the distance between your object and your camera and it will autofocus for you. So you can put on every manual focus lens and it will just autofocus for you. If you don't want to manual focus by yourself. <laughs> but right now there is no app to change maybe like the focusing speed or like the distance information, that kind of stuff. There's all auto. So like everything is running in the motor calculation uh, everything is running inside the motor so no information you cannot change different lens the lens how to set up the lens they said just set three uh, distance point and it will just save automatically and how to change the lens profile just it will figure out by itself i don't know just like there's no any manual choosing or like information because i think if you can get the sensor information like the distance information and also manual focus by yourself it will be pretty useful but right now it looks like they're not planning to do this symbol they're making a brand new small little monitor that can record proxy video inside the monitor so like if your assistant need to make sure everything goes right you can play it back by itself, he don't need to touch the camera at all. So he can play back by itself and make sure everything goes right. This is really useful. I really love the Aperture MC Pro because the beam angle is tighter, the brightness is brighter, the control is much more easy because the dial, the knob is bigger, the LCD screen on top is colorful and much more information. Yep, everything is better, but only downside, I think the weight is a little bit on the heavy side for a little pocket light but like i will buy definitely buy maybe two or four in my kit just for fun at soon well they share with me a new powerful charger it's total output can output 450 watt there are six type c two type a yeah. super duper powerful you can charge maybe like several little lights or like you need to power something small little light that kind of stuff this is pretty useful there are also a little lcd screen to show you which port are you using how many watts are you using that kind of information another prototype it's 2000 watt 2000 watt cob light well, how much percent is it now uh, two percent <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is pretty pretty powerful but maybe like half stop Brighter than a 1200 watt, who knows? Because it's still a prototype and the fan noise is hilarious. Oh, that way. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, yeah. No, I was hearing it from there. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Wait, uh, what? What? That's not something you want on set. <laughs> There's another prototype. This is a mini DMX board with wireless connectivity, but it's not CRMX. <laughs> Pretty sad. I asked them, will they put CRMX in this controller board in the future? I think you need to use CRMX in the future. Yeah. If you use CRMX in the future, you need to use CRMX in the future. Oh, so maybe in the future, in battery and like it's wireless connectivity and you can change different channels. Yeah. This is pretty useful if you are just going to dim the light, change color temperature, or just toggle some easy effect, that kind of stuff. In the future, I hope this kind of device we can have customized, we can customize different channel. Maybe like first slider, we can control the second channel, but like the second slider, we can control maybe DMX5, the fifth channel that kind of stuff because every uh, lighting profile is different and you can customize to fit your need that kind of stuff will be pretty awesome for gaffers at yc onion we have brand new quick height adjustment tripod and it's still a prototype it's called pinta so quick height adjustment is pretty useful because there's a lever you just pull it up and you can adjust the height and just put it back in place it will just lock it in place it's pretty useful for like documentary you will need to or like solo shooter you need to adjust the height by yourself and you don't need to <laughs> bend your knee to like right, yeah, sometimes you have to you like, no, like, no, 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 <laughs> yeah 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 that's a pain so this pine top tripod is still a prototype so i hope in the future they can release a pine top tripod with a flat top plate <laughs> because not every photographer need a middle column and this middle column in the show floor is pretty long i hope there is a flat top plate and if you are going to shoot video yeah you can use a ball head but like if you're going to shoot photos please give or like shorter column is better like i don't need that super duper long column at deity we have a brand new lav recorder that can record 32 bit float and the input is actually stereo so it's technically a two channel recorder they also integrate the bluetooth time code syncing function because they have the time code generator that can bluetooth and sync every device with bluetooth time code syncing with bluetooth built into this little recorder and DT also make a new uhf system the transmitter and receiver what's special about it the two channel receiver and the transmitter okay and this transmitter has the same 32-bit float audio recorder built in so it's a recorder and a transmitter wow so maybe you have some kind of interference or like the signal is pretty weak pretty noisy you can still use the 32-bit audio file inside the transmitter to mix your audio. Wow, this is awesome. Field world monitors are all made out of plastic right now, but we have a prototype <laughs> that are made out of aluminum chassis. So much more sturdier and the weight is still pretty lightweight because they said they are going to sell it to some rental house and rental house don't want like plastic monitors to break easily so they're designing and making the aluminum chassis monitor at c motion they are showing us a brand new like transformer power station it's power station it's also a charger so you can charge your battery you can use your battery to power your light your camera or anything you can plug it in car batteries to power everything it's a swiss army knife of power station this is just you can do everything and you can change the settings by yourself any voltage you can change it by yourself it, yeah this is pretty dope at diesel film they release a brand new product line the 2x anamorphic prime lens for super 35 sensor and they have two version the golden flare version and the silver flare version the size and weight are well controlled on the pebble series compared to the atlas in lowa anamorphic lens those are gigantic and super heavy you need some lens support or a bigger crew to help you change a lens because those lens aren't 
like two kilograms per lens. Those are heavy. And this is pretty lightweight. The Pebble 2X series anamorphic lens from Diesel Film. Just use it like your regular prime lens. It's super lightweight and the size is not that big. This is awesome. Another new lens, the 25 to 300 T 2.8. This is a pretty cool zoom lens from Diesel Film. At Felix, we have a brand new ellipsoidal light called G3. It's a 90 watt RGBW light. There are two versions of this light, one with ellipsoidal in front of your light, but you cannot detach the ellipsoidal. You can just change the beam angle of the optics, but you cannot take it apart. This is the whole light. It's, oh. a, it's a completely oh separate light than what our two, P3 two is. It's not an attachment. I don't know why they designed this. And the second version is a light, just 90 watt light with no any optics. You can put barn doors, you can cut the light, shape the light, that kind of stuff. But like they're making two different versions and you cannot change anything in front of it. This is pretty weird decision i don't know at holly lane we have two brand new live stream cameras venice pro and venice air so pretty much the same they're just a camera um and built in android so you can upload live stream to several platforms yeah <laughs> i think that's it just the video quality looks not so good actually <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's still just a prototype, maybe. At Hive Lighting, we have a brand new bulb called PAR30. The new thing from Hive is actually we're doing a PAR30 lamp. Full color changeable, fully uh, swappable optics. It's a 20 watt bulb and seven color engine inside. Built in CR Max, built in battery. And we have a very tight beam angle so you can have a very th far throw. It's also the uh, 11 degree beam angle. Okay. It's basically 10 degrees. And also comes with lots of accessories. So like optics, filter stuff. Yeah, pretty cool light. Oh, if you want a full output, you need to plug in it. You need to plug it in or screw oh, Okay, got it. And non-light booth, I think this is a prototype. This is the Pebble Matte 60C. It is not a matte light. Uh, it's not flexible. It's a panel light, but like pretty thin. I don't know, this is weird products because it's just a one by one panel light and it's called Pebble Matte. Another light is the Evoke 900C, the RGB LAC light. It's 900 watt output, so pretty powerful RGB COB light. And the power supply, the ballast is so much smaller than the 1200 watt version. Dual lens booth, they are using different cool material to make their lens. If you use the sandpaper and you can customize the look of your lens because after scrubbing your lens, it will come out with a beautiful copper color. This is pretty cool. And also an entire set of lens is the triangle aperture lens. This is pretty cool. After you step down the aperture, your bokeh in the background, those circle will become triangle. So like, wow, it's pretty special. Do lens also share with me some information about their mini prime lens. <laughs> they are working on the wider angle, maybe like 21 millimeter and they hope they can make that 21 meter meter the same weight and same size. Mm. They are also working on the telephoto end, maybe like 105 or one, I don't know. They say they are working on telephoto end and they also want to make it the same size and the same weight. At Skier, they're making a 160 watt RGB LAC light in a very small form factor and the build quality is pretty solid too. They also make a new 350 watt RGB LAC light but like it's huge because it's designed for like stage or stadium that kind of stuff by like 350 watt for stage? I don't know. At Obvious Future, they're making very special software that use AI to know what kind of content is that in your local drive. I mean, like if you have tons of cat videos and if you search cat, you don't even need to change the title. You will know where's your cat video. This is pretty cool. So it's no tagging. 
You just upload your movies somewhere or software watches it and then you find what you need to find. And if you want to find a specific line, you just type in that line and it will just find that video. And what's special about this software? They are running all these AI stuff locally. You can be totally offline. You don't need to upload your file to the clouds, that kind of stuff. They are running locally. What? This is just like magic. So I just search and I don't need to even tag what kind of content is that. It will just search and find it out by, by itself. What is this? At Kuroto Studio, they're making your audio post-production easier because you can find maybe like you want a footstep and they can generate a footstep that fits your need. Maybe like you want to f uh, use boots or like you want uh, sports shoes, that kind of sound and you want to walk on sand, you want to walk on woods, you can adjust the slider and fit your need. And because of the AI capabilities, they said maybe they can let the user to upload their own audio file in the future. So you can adjust your audio file to uh, make a little adjustment to it and make the audio um, to fit your need. At Bozma, they are showcasing their 8K cameras. Like the quality is not there and the form factor is so huge and they said it's for live streaming. I don't know, but like the camera is huge and bulky. I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's still a prototype. Well, uh, maybe in the future it's going to be better and better. Uh, who knows? At Tilta, they are showing us a brand new motor head. They can pin and tilt your light. Even your light is super duper high in the sky. What the heck is this? You can just stay on the ground and control the pin and tilt of your light. This is pretty cool. Tilta did release a new Nano 2 uh, focusing wheel for the fo wireless focusing system. And it's pretty cool because there is a huge screen on there and you can show tons of information on there. Maybe like camera information, distance information. Obviously there's no rings that you're going to make physical marks on. Yep. So instead you would actually, so you see this little dot right there? Yep. When I press this function button once, that's going to make a mark. And then you can make multiple points. Okay. And then when you hit those marks, it'll vibrate. So it'll, oh, you'll know. Cool. So you don't need to always look at the mark and turn the wheel. You can feel it. So you can look, just look at the monitor and turn the wheel and feel the marker. This is pretty cool. Oh, and if you use the wheel by itself, you can control two motors at the same time. But if you add the additional handle on there, you can control four motors at the same time. This is pretty awesome. And also you can use this Nano 2 to control the head. I just said the lighting control head. You can use the Nano 2 to control those head too. So pretty cool. This is a beautiful ecosystem. At Kino Technic, they're showing us some prototype, the wireless DMX system they create that can control with your smartphone with Bluetooth app. Uh, it's a transmitter, also a receiver. Yeah. And the Bluetooth app, uh, right now, they can control brightness and color temperature, but in the future, they are adding more functions in there. Uh, we will add RGB and defects to this uh, simpler, simple version of this app. The demon is pretty smooth. The changing of color temperature is pretty smooth. Every light with DMX, you can just plug it in and ready to go. Just beautiful, easy control with your phone. And the transmitter and receiver, they have built-in batteries run around 40 hours, he said. Yeah, and the battery life is like 40 hours. Uh, so is it possible to customize yes. the profile by yes. yourself? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. You can like edit the profile. At Audions, they are making like cloud storage servers like Google Drive or Dropbox, that kind of stuff. And also a file managing service. So you can Upload your file to the cloud and you will create a proxy if you want to. As soon as you upload your media to the cloud, yeah, Altium no, will automatically I transcode that proxy for you. And the editor can download the file and if there is a missing file, it can uh, he can just ask for another person to upload that file from another place. So as of now, we only have integrations with Premiere Pro and Final Cut. 
okay. hoping to get resolved by the end of the year, which okay. is really exciting. Yep. In the editing part, they can synchronize the folder into your editing software. But right now, they just can work with the Premiere and Final Cut. And also the review part, you upload a video and send it to the client or like your uh, director, that kind of stuff. And they can add real-time markers on there. It's time-coded commenting, which is one of my favorite. All you have to do is toggle that, choose a color-coded marker, which is nice, because you can base those on different things for organization, right? Mm -hmm. Save, and then boom, there you have everything in there ready to go. It's easier <laughs> than Google Drive. If you use Google Drive before, it was just such a mess. You, you said, 30 seconds. What the heck is 30 seconds? In the 30 seconds, there are th three clips in there so what the heck should i change at hoodman they make a new landing pad called lp21 it's a smaller landing pad and it's weighted so weighted landing pad is pretty useful because if you take off our landing or the wind is pretty strong your landing pad will just fly away so this is easier to carry but this is so heavy you can't we take a leaf blower to this and we can't move it i think that's it this is everything i saw there are still prototype or on shipped yet product in a navy 2023 thanks for watching because i spent around 10k to check out this navy show so spend tons of money on this and i spent tons lots of time making this video so if you like this video press like uh subscribe if you want to this is kai studio my name is kai yuan and i will see you guys next time bye bye